So, getting in the, at the top of the map here, we have Izad as the Brits spawning on the top left of De Deccan. So he's going to get the open side trade route. On the right hand side, we're going to see Perez's China. Uh, obviously, starting with these extra crates is going to give each sieve a massive eco bonus. Um, if anyone or everyone here is a classic AOE fan, so we all know that back on the Asian dynasties, um, uh, obviously before DE, we always see Otto India. They'd always take the center, chuck an aggro down here, and we just see this absolute dumpster fire of a rush, just, just flood units in and just overwhelm your opponent with all these um, extra crates here at the start. But the problem with that is that there's only one spot to put the aggro in the center. And there's so many pro AOE players like Izad who know if they just body block in the center, they can, um, they can stop the aggro from going down early on and potentially force a um, defensive Kali Mata and maybe a FF instead of a rush. No, no. Um, so there's so many options here for um, offensive and defensive play with these early crates. And it looks like we're going to open with three manners from Izad and a market, as well as we're going to see uh, Mato's three... Um, three village strat here, obviously much easier to execute, and um, opting with a moss and a trade post start from Nooks. Um, so yeah, looking good, and also obviously um, the yaks are going to be gathered up here pretty damn quick. And yeah, here comes the body block. Just as predicted, he knows what's up. Prez just... Oh, is he going to get it down? Surely, he's waiting for the... He's waiting for them. Oh, he gets it down. So going to go up about 10 seconds slower there, but... Um, just absolutely showing the skill of these players. Yeah, and then well, one thing I really like that we're seeing here, and I talk about this all the time when I'm casting AOE 2 as well, which is if, if you know you're against a higher skill opponent, you need to put the pressure on them early because you have to oh, yeah. bring them down to your level, right? Because they're, they're quotation marks better than you. So if you just play the game normally, then they're going to win. You need to be putting on that aggression early. So as I'd obviously prepared for that, and, and Perez, we're, we're here to try battle it out and stop it early, but looks like uh, we're getting the building up anyway. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I completely agree with you. And especially like the longer this game goes, it's going to get even worse because they've literally got boomy sieves. They've got two sieves, Brits and China, that are just so boomy late game, as soon as they get age 3 they're in trouble, um, so Nooks and Nona are just like, they've got a win condition, and it's it's within 10 yeah. minutes of the game. Um, this build actually might go yeah. down though, I mean, he's taken a lot of fire he's in the center. taken a beating, <laughs> <laughs> The Chinese mind uh, is just, just going is critical very after critical. Up? Oh, yeah. he, he, the, the aggro will go up, the aggro fort's going to go up regardless, um, even if the villager goes down, because it's an age up, so it doesn't need a villager on it after it's built, but... Um, He's going to lose a bill, which is 100 food, which is, oh, ouch, that's just the clear it goes down. Um, yeah, especially this early in the game, game, the economy's not really rolling exactly, yet, so exactly, these, yeah. these early villager losses are really detrimental to the build orders and things like that as well. Mm. I'm seeing if there's going to be, like, any side, because if, if they can, they, they know that the rush is coming on the right-hand side of the plateau, right? They're going to hit India. So if Izad yep. can just try not to get raided and try not to cause any have any idle time and that's what he's doing on the left side here he's starting to get some manners down for line of sight um the rush isn't going to have that much of an effect it's like if, if he's still gathering you know um but uh we'll, we'll see if they can cause enough idle time from china because especially these high level games it all comes down to how much idle time you can cause your opponent and um it's going to aggro some of the rhinos though if they're going 10 damage apiece not too bad and yeah, so we're going to see some Sepoy Abus coming out here from uh, No No and Nooks. Um, hopefully they've studied their uh, nice uh, 10 Abus timing here. Um, obviously very strong. And especially with shipments in AoE 3, uh, Fluffy, it's, there's this cool thing you can do where you can chuck a consulate down at the front here with the No No, and he can pop out eight, eight, seven. He can pop out seven cavalry units, like in an instant, if he times it well. Oh, wow. Um, so it can be very deadly if he can, if he, if he's practiced it and he's timed it, he can uh, definitely cause some havoc here with um, Cav coming out. And it's gonna fresh go. Uh, yeah, and like too. you said, if he gets them out this early, you, when when you said um, <laughs> Perez and Azad are gonna be looking to expand, having mobile units like that on the field can can really stop that expansion and at least delay it. Yeah, definitely. I'll just take a quick look at decks here. It looks like uh, Brits is going for a more eco-heavy deck. Um, late game, which is fair. China is going to look to... No, China's committing age 2 by the looks of it, and um, potentially maybe into age 3 but definitely uh, going in for the long age 2 haul. 
and India, yeah, that's an aggro deck. That's an aggro deck. Look at that. He's got Team 2 Flails. Team 2 Flails coming in. That's not his first card, though, though. It is. Team 2 Flails coming in. Nooks has got 3 Husk, followed by Seren and Wood. Yeah, okay. So, again, okay. So, Fluffy, there's this meme strategy that's done continuously by, you know, it's just lads coming in, having a bit of a laugh on the rank yeah. ladder, and they're actually doing it in a tournament. They're sending these, these units, these two Flails... They have high siege, but they die really quickly. So they can get your t opponent's town center down, but they suck versus units. And it's considered a mean yeah. strat. But now the Hus are going to get onto the Abyss here, which is not what they quite want. The Sipo are going to get absolutely shredded by these Chukonu. It's looking like an even fight here, because the Hus are now getting back on the Chukonu. We'll the Hus are really, they need to go to the back line. Yeah, exactly, yeah exactly. they're just getting shredded right now. Ooh, um, how do we the 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 Because the play elephants are being touched though. Yeah, they that's, some hits that's in themselves. the thing. The flyers are still alive. No, a lot of Tokenu here. Now, these, these are fast firing crossbow units if, uh, if history are, yeah. is accurate, which I assume it is. <laughs> and they'll make short work of uh, any siege units that come forward, like these flyer elephants as well. And you really have to be careful of just letting units like this match up because. Kiting backwards, and you'll see uh, quite comfortably perish. It's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna go back, stand under my palace, and we'll hang out here a little bit. The, exactly, the push yeah. has been delayed and stopped for now. And like you said, there's a timer on this game. There's a timer, it's, so yeah, looks no, no, they've got to know. We've, like, the, the first wave, as it were, has been stopped, has been halted. Yeah, here comes so. the next wave, though, because more Avis are joining the fight and more Seaboy. Hussar are here, but they're here too early, actually. A bit of a misplay yeah. from Azad here. Like, um, Perez weren't ready. The Chokin weren't this far up, so Hussar numbers have been thinned out really quickly. And you've got to watch out for that because uh, it's going to be a 2v1. But no, Ch China is in full swing right now. Yeah. Step right is here. Coming in. In. Yeah, they're going to. Not enough Sepoy out on the field. Well, he's had enough Sepoy, but like you said, they're just getting picked off by the Chico now. Like, they're just drilling holes into them. And those flail elephants need to get on that town center, but they they just I think they've missed their opportunity here. Maybe instead yeah, of seven hundred wood no. from Otto, maybe he needed five gems as well, or seven hundred coin to get another batch out. I feel like this is. Oh, I'm not even trying to figure out the eco balance. I have no idea how that's going to affect. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. I'll leave bonkers. the I'll leave the stat number stuff to you. <laughs> I think I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at scores here and. Remember at the start I said if, if um, Brit can boom on the left side here, he's pretty chilling and he's at his being able to boom there. He's like, he's literally got no nothing holding him back. They can't push him to China. There's British villages everywhere, bro. Yeah. Like everywhere. <laughs> he sent like, he, he sent, uh, I think, oh no, he's brought them to the front, yeah. And now Raid's coming on the back line as well from EZ. Um, Nooks will pick oh, up no. a house for free though, but um, definitely causing some idle time. Uh, and we've got Sowers coming out from uh, Nono here, so they're going to commit to the age too. Not going to try and age up here. I feel like there's there's um, if Nono ages up here, if he sets her on a coin instead of the four Sowers, he could then send siege elephants from the from the Agra fort, and they could start sieging down that town center from range. Um, I think that's probably the better play here because it's literally just like an artillery piece on the back of an elephant. Yeah. Um, and that's, but I think that's better than, you know, committing to the age two. Because they've held the age two, right? They've showed them, you know, we, we've got enough we've got mass here. You know, you've been out micro, I feel they, like these, the age up. Yeah, these Hussars still need to be dealt with, though. There's only four of them, but they're running around. And obviously, yeah. the Eco's fragile because we're going for this aggressive all-in kind of style play. And just a couple of Hussars are going to make that even more difficult. Yeah, it's, how many bills are in there? There's at least nine bills in that town center. Um, causing them um, that are all idle. Yeah, like like you said, I, idle time is really the name of the game when you get to this this level of play, and it's the small differences that can actually really um, amplify who comes out as the winner and, and turn into into large differences. So, oh, we're getting some raids in on the Britons though. I don't know if you've caught this on the top left of the map. Top left. Oh, Nono and Nux are here now, actually raiding this market. Yeah, they've been bringing it down and. Um... Yeah, he's got to be careful though. There's five hustlers that are going to pick up these four Avis though. And the Avis are bloody expensive units. 100 gold apiece. Oh. Oh, here we go. Oh, God. Now China's death ball is going to squeeze slightly here on the Tsunami. Oh, I think uh, <laughs> this is probably going to be the GG call here. Look at that. Ouch. 
I don't see them coming back from that. Yeah, no, no, cool. But GG, well done to EZ Perez taking game one over Nooks and Nono in the quarter, the first quarter final game of the series. Congratulations, boys. Man, that was, that was quick. That was quick, yeah, 10 minutes. The 10 minute we know exactly. You, you said they've got to win in 10 minutes. It got the 10 minutes in six seconds and they're like, no, just we're right. <laughs> six seconds past, we're out. That's Holy great. moly. Oh my God, but yeah, Man. I feel like that's absolutely. This um, fluffy, Iza and Perez, Perez have now used one of their best sieves. They've used their best sieves yeah. against Nooks and Nono's worst sieves. So, in yeah. the long run, kind of a trade. Well, this also, right, so mind games come into it. When you're in best of series, the best of fives can go long as well. Yeah. And we spoke about the, the lower rated team having to show aggression early. They've just done that. This flail elephant thing, it's super all in strat. Mm. It's like, okay. These guys are going to come at us early. We need to make sure we pick our sibs around being able to manage early and then exactly, win yeah. into the late game. But if we go into game two now, and Nux and Nono flip the, flip the script completely. They go boom. And they're like, actually, <laughs> we're not going to have any aggression because that's what you're expecting now. And the mind games come through. And if they pull that off and then win with that, they're, they're suddenly in the heads. And 1-1 one, one with as Adam Perez kind of guessing what's coming next, it, this definitely still time and i like that they've gone in yeah. with this all-in mentality and this this one-off quotation marks meme strat to be like hey boys listen we're gonna do what we can to try and trip you up and it, it's gonna definitely keep Azad and perez on their toes mm, element of surprise i think that's what they're relying on here gk shannon with the 100 bits thanks man enjoying the stream enjoying the stream um tomato asking did they do a 10 10 um yeah i think i'll check out the bills actually real quick i'll just look at the timelines um, village account, who we want, no, 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 did do a 10-10, yes, um, so he got, he got that aggro up real quick, um, the problem was he just didn't, they, they went for an all-in, and I feel like, um, they were just a bit, bit too slow with it, um, they kind of posted around the front instead of gassing it in, he sent, he didn't send flails as his first stage two card, which was his downfall, if he sent flails as his first stage two, they could have, they could have done some damage, but they didn't, anyway, um, yeah. we'll get into the... Just give me a sec here. I'll just check the next games coming out. So I was looking through the stats as well, and Azad being able to make just as many military units as other people in parts, but only losing 18 units, which is miles less than anybody else. So those, those Hussar making sure he got in, got a couple of damage, and then ran back out again, and, and really doing the, uh, the raids effectively, I think. It saved him that economy, so allowed him to boom up more, like you were saying. So definitely, really... Definitely. Uh, just updating the scoreboard here, uh, and we should be ready for the next game. Yeah, right, oh, so. that was that was quick fire rounds. That was oh, that was, that that was, was a quick round, oh, most definitely. Yeah. Damn, I'm used to like an hour. Games, an hour. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> already bloody already done this. All right. Uh, all righty. So the first match going over to Izan Perez. Congratulations, boys. I'll give you the win there. Nooks and Ono going down. So one up here. And the next sieves have come in. And they are... Oh, interesting. Interesting. Japan and Mexico. From Izan and Perez. Mexico, we don't see Mexico much. Mexico is more, in, especially in 2v2, uh, not meme sieve, but uh, definitely uh, basically what we saw from Nooks and Nono, Izad and Perez are going to be doing by the looks of it. Um, although Japan is probably one of his best. Um, versing Nooks is Dutch and Hausa. So Dutch and Hausa. Right. So what are, what are we going to see from Dutch and Hausa then? What, what are you expecting? We're going to see some uh, turtling. To We're going to see some turtling. Um, so, so yeah, we are going to see a flip of the script there potentially. And... Okay. See, I like it. This is what you want to do. You really want to get in the minds of your opponent, and you've you've got to try and and put them on the back foot some some way somehow. And mm -hmm. um, I, I I think changing playstyles is is a good thing to do. And you said that Nux and Nono they go back right. These guys aren't new to the scene. Oh, 2005 no, no, no. or something. They started playing AOE three. 
Yeah. So, like, the playbook goes deep, and that's the advantage that they've got, and they and they need to play to that. So, I really like that we're seeing this multitude of um, of, of different strategies already this early in, in the best of five as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, they, they know they're, you know, they're, they're familiar with tournament uh, matchups. They know how to manipulate their opponents. They, they know what to pick and to counterpick. All right, so the next game is loaded up, so we'll boot into that one. Yeah, I know what to find it now. Look at me go. Uh, look at me not Second time it. lucky. <laughs> yeah, all right. Da, da, da. Oh, I've seen it, and now it's gone. It was there. It was there. Just it. Th I'll just close and open again. Yeah, there it is. I see it. AoE2 has all of these interesting things as well. I think, well, yeah, that should work. You know the tricks. But it doesn't. We actually forgot to do the prediction. Ah, I forgot to do the prediction the first time, so I'll quickly get that in before we start this next game. Um, uh, well, that's the mod's job. It should be the mod's job, but... Uh... Come on. Come on, mods. Yeah, GK. Get it together. Do you know how much Josh is doing right now? These these lovely, beautiful transitions. Solo carrying the cast. Actually, just as Friends you say that, GK, what, what as soon as you like. did that, GK just did it. Thanks, GK. Yeah, let's go. GK, I'm putting it on game. you. Is, uh, you do that for now. <laughs> Alright, uh, right. is your next game loaded in or still waiting? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Alright, brilliant. At zero seconds? Or one second? Or, yeah. yeah. Alright, three, two, one. Go for it. And I'll change this over. All good. We are set to go. Oh, well, this map very different to the last one. Um, the trade route, I, I, I assume that's a trade route, right? Go yeah. through the middle. And then the team spawn actually together this time. So raiding should be a little bit more difficult, I would imagine, on a map like this. Uh, yeah, to, to an extent. Um, they've also obviously got two hunts in their base um, to share between the two of them. But problems are going to arise um, when they have to... See, if you look at the top of, like, outside Red's base, that's quite a distance, yep. those next two hunts. So, yeah, early on it should be um, difficult to raid. But as the game goes on, they're going to have to, you know, chuck another town centre out there um, to protect from raids. Um, but obviously, Japan doesn't need to gather from hunts. They gather from berry bushes, so... Basically, it's going to be hard oh. to, raise, to raid Izad and Perez this game. Um, yeah, which is tough, because you said um, that they... Well, actually, no, it kind of works in the favour of Nux and Nono, because they, they, you said they're not going to be looking to be aggressive this yeah. game anyway, so... It, it's kind I of okay saying, that they'll... I, I want to see their sieves, because they may do... They, they may pull a 180 and, like, do a Desert Raider rush or something. <laughs> They can, like, yeah, just... chuck a tower down and, like, spawn out all this shitty cav. Um, so, first shipment coming in from Izad. Oh, look at his deck. Um, okay, gonna be sending heavily Kami. Oh, no, he's gonna be sending two villagers. Interesting. So, normally, Japan opts for heavenly Kami um, and a consulate start, which makes his um, shrine super-duper cheap. So, at the moment, they're, I think, one, 125 wood, but it can make them 77 wood. Um... But he's going to opt for two yeah. villages, which is not too common. So he's not going to go for a shrine boom, um, which is what Japan normally does. So the early treasure chest pissed up way in the north as well. Um, by Perez. What did he pick up, sir? Just find that one. A treasure chest way in the north. Found that nice and early. Oh, was it like a fifty coin or something? Uh, I don't even know what he got out of it, oh, wait, but wait, it looked good. It was shiny. Hey, John. There we go. There we go. There we go. 50 coin, nice. 50 yeah. coin, 25 wood. Another 50 coin, yeah, so he's up by 100 coin, I think. Um, and they so, will uh, they will be picking up another, they'll be tag teaming this treasure for 125 wood, which is going to be quite a bit. Um, talking down Haciendas already. If we have a look at uh, Perez's deck as well, uh, it does have land grab in here, so he's going to be chucking a lot of Haciendas down. Yeah, so basically, he's adding Perez, they're not getting raided. They're literally not getting raided at all. Um, yeah, These bad boys trade and post are coming soon. in already, though. Like I said, um, ra raids don't seem to be the option. It's not what they're actually pushing yeah, for. Yeah, they're going and... boom. Um, House of no no Civ actually gets um, uh, like a passive gather of influence, um, which is another mm -hmm. re resource that they have um, okay. to come in here and um, with every trade post he gets. So if he can cop like, all, all three on the trade line and these two native trade posts, He's going to get a bunch of free units that are basically going to cost him nothing. Um, 
Okay. So the option um, is the definitely The builder's being caught on the way to the trading post, but uh, made it in. He's gonna still take a lot of siege though from those explorers. Yeah. I'll check uh, the other player's decks. Uh, yeah, no, no, sending the second Amir, so um, yeah, definitely opting for those trade routes. Um, and yeah, looking for more age three gameplay. Yeah, but definitely a boom. And if we check out Nooks, definitely a boom. Deck, and... Yeah, this is this looks like he, he's got um the religious freedom card and the fencing school card. So we're gonna see a boom from Nooks and Nono here. Not not a he not a heavy boom, but like an age three sort of aggression. Um, and I feel like yeah. if they don't overcommit, because. Japan can easily, you know, tempt you into their base and then pop flaming arrows on you. Um, if they don't overcommit and they be aware of their surroundings, be aware of what's happening on the map, they're in a good spot. Yeah, we, we do see that trading post has been put really low already. Um, oh, but... wow. Yeah, it has been. <laughs> but they've opted to leave it be and bring a military down to a uh... part of the map instead. I... Do you think there's any particular reason why they've moved away from there rather than finishing the build enough? Or they expect I think it's because uh, Japan's going to try and get more shrines down. Um, he's better off, you know, chucking down some shrines and getting res from that than sieging this. Um, but it is so low HP, the option definitely is there to try and maybe take it down, I think. Yeah, we see shrines being built in. I mean, just just how important to these trading posts? Like, what kind of resource gain are we talking? Ooh, we're talking, I think it's... the. Two and a half or three and a half villages, basically. Um, Oak chat can help me oh, out. Wow. With that. Oh, the big Don Arnie in chat. Hey, man. Fencing school. What card is he missing? He is missing. Oh, missed him. Nooks. Okay, these shrines are being bank. hit a little bit too. Um, yeah, they're going to cop some damage, but I mean, it means that he's not, you know, taking treasures or he's not scouting. And looks like raiders yeah. are going to come in here from Nono. You're going to start picking off these uh, explorers. Is Ezad quick enough with a smoke bomb? Doesn't look like it. He's going to go down. Oh, he attempts it, but not quite going to get the smoke bomb off. Um, and bank going to come in from Dutch. So it looks like we're going to see four banks start. Um, and going to opt with skirms. Bit of a turtling sort of base building here. The iron wall, as we may say. Um, How effective are these, are these raiders going to be, though, have to dive all the way into the Japanese yeah. base? Like you said, they collect on berries, right? They don't really have to expand exactly. too um, early they're not anyway. Gonna be that effective. They're not going to be that effective at all. Um, I think he did... Uh, if we check his deck... Okay, he sent them. Because, yeah. He has the option to call them from his town center if he ages up at the Songhai. Um, but I think he's gone off the house for the extra house of builder. So, basically... Um, Izad is going to be able to boom quite significantly as Japan with his shrines, but the problem with that is they've given um, they've given no no the trade line, which is basically equal to yeah. the shrine boom. Well, which explains why the score is actually favouring Nooks and Nono right now. Which... Yeah, they are ahead. Although the insurgents are going to pop out here and start seizing this trade route down. It's like he's counted it. He's he's counted the raiders and the trade routes proposed with insurgents. And then, you know, on the money, right there, and then Nooks, and, Nooks has just spawned in some skirms to push him back. Like, that's some top quality predictions right there from the players. Yeah. No, no, no one's actually just desperately trying to get good value out of these raiders, but he's not finding any villages out here on the hunt. And he's not, Instead, he's yeah. just going to have to opt to take him down these shrines and try to stop the boom that way. So, I mean, some damage, I guess, but... Maybe not as much as they were hoping for. Yeah, they do have actually some good some good siege. So it's not going to be the worst. Obviously, he wants to get the raids, but it's not going to be the worst option to not to just get the shrines. Um, although he doesn't want to lose the trade routes. He definitely doesn't want to lose the trade routes. Yeah, we've got a couple more raiders come down here to maybe defend this trade route, but numbers definitely not in the favour. Bob Nooks and Nono, um, Izad has got so many musketeers here right now, yeah. setting fire to this bottom trade route. Uh, it's got to go down, surely. I think so. Oh, a villager did get caught out on the hunt. Wasn't a villager. He was Nandato Azad. <laughs> um, good old Azad. Um, you can change the names of the explorers in this game as well. Um, so sometimes we That's do see cool. some uh, hilarious change-ups. Normally by uh, some Aussie boys. Jack, I'm looking at you. But um, Skirm's coming out on the top here. Going to try and pick off the insurgents. Obviously really weak units, but they'll be able to snare those skirmishes and pop them into melee here. And the Salvador's on the back. Yeah. 
Okay. Although, if he baits him in, if he baits him in just one more, ooh, just gets away. I was going to say he could flank with the scammers, scammers here. Um, and he's going for a big raid at the bottom here. He can pick up these Saltadors if he's if he's on the money, but he's going to opt for Vils here. He really, he needs to just do eco damage here, I think, because that bottom trade route has fallen. Yeah. So, with and that trade down, go he, well. he's got to return the eco damage. Exactly. And now he can just get out of here as well. Not going to take too much of military losses. And pretty good raid, actually, against Paras for, for Nono. And it, it's kind of what we were seeing um, he's out doing last game with the Britons with the Hussar. It's a similar thing. Run in, hit some villages, get back out of there again. And uh, it, it's nice to see that, that kind of style being adopted and performed at almost an equally, if not better, degree going into game two. Mm, I think the scores are set, definitely staying in our head. I don't see Nooks and Nono playing Hauser and Dutch that much, and they must have been practicing because, my God, they're, they're holding their own. Especially versus Izad, yeah. who's Japan's pretty good. And the, this skirmisher number starts to get really big as well, actually. If you look at Nooks in the, in the middle of the field, this skirmisher number is really scary. That they're, they're going to be able to handle the musketeers if they get any larger, I would think. Oh, heck yeah. Like, Dutch basically has this, like, peak, like, early age three, late age two, where they can just batch out so many skirmishes. Um, it's just it's just so easy. And they've got so many cards. I'll see if he's got his in his deck. He's got, yeah, he's got infantry attack, infantry hit points, infantry combat. Like, these skirmishes are absolutely busted. Yeah. Those, um, those shrines, they get finished off as well with the raids. Yeah, at the um, top. So all the shrines lost just for one trade. Post all, all at the top anyway. I know there's still some over to the left-hand side here. And he loses um, line of sight maybe, for it as well. Yeah, need to get some exploration. And rather than just idling all of the military here, I mean, I, I'm sure Nux has got a million macro things going on right now. <laughs> but let, let's try and get some of these units moving around the map and see if we can find out where Blue's expanded to, if at all. He's, he's done a great them. job at that. Like, look, he's moving the musketeers. Yeah. Like, they they should be up there sieging the middle trade post, but they're running chasing bloody raiders. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely think if if we look at the two plays for Nux and Nono, Nono has been doing. I mean, the legwork, so to speak. He's got raiders, so he should be. But he's definitely kept the present as I'm thinking and on their toes this game. They've kept him occupied. Yeah. Looks like um, he's had gone up for the age up. Uh, obviously reacting to Nux getting up so quick. Oh. Um, the engineer just caught these raiders out, so they're all gonna fall. Loses five on the back line there in the farmlands. Yeah. And uh, both both teams opting to just have a bit of a macro moment, take a breath, and uh, figure out what the next next approach is gonna be. Who who are you favouring at got... the moment? Who's got the top side for you? Uh, I mean, this army of javelin riders we have got right now. I mean, yeah. I, I, this this is kind of an old quote, but it. it it, it's really hard to win a, uh, an open battle without heavy horse, and there's no cavalry options at all that I'm seeing coming out of um, Azado Perez. And that lack of mobility, like I said, it, it, on open maps like this, it, it's so important mm. because how, the, how can they never kill an army they can never catch, right? And it's really hard to That's move really around smart, and yeah. most shrines to be found. It, it's really difficult. They're like getting this slowly, like with every minute, they're getting squished further and further in, you know? Yeah, but the scores are closing up a little, so mm. you've got to be wondering what what they're hiding back here, and that that will be playing on the minds of of Nux and Nono as well. What what are we going to be running into? But Nux is look, he's primarily just been booming away, and this game's in. Oh, there's some there's some Falconets here as well. Yeah, I was about to say if he switches to Falks, he's in such a good position because the good thing about this combo is Javelin Riders have a multiplier against artillery, so they can run in, snipe the flaming arrows, which are like anti artillery. Um, yeah. And the, the Falconets, they've got no, they've basically not got no cavalry. So if they get a volley off, on, if they get a volley off from these insurgents, they're gonna actually oh my God. blast them. This could be a GG moment actually. Yeah. If they get a couple of big hits here because you need this army. The scam's gonna maybe beat them in, but the insurgents run out. Oh, look at the damage! Oh, beautiful hits. I think I'm a bit ahead, so I'll just pause for a few seconds. But yeah, it's absolutely like fire. Like this is, like you said, almost a GG moment. Man, in, in the business we call that a bada boom. <laughs> I want to see some more of those happening. I, I feel like man, get more of these falcon things. Get them. That's He's got to pop them. But Japan's getting flaming arrows in. But if they get close enough under the spawn point from the town center, where the home city shipment's going to come out, they can snipe off those flaming arrows straight away. Like Izad and Pro no Nooks and Nono win this fight if they can kill the flaming arrows. If they can kill them like right away, they win this fight. 
It's all gonna come down. It's all gonna come down to the micro. Here he comes. Here he oh, comes. The fox gets some more good shots off around the side of that building as well. Villages are dying. There's more raids happening on the left hand side as well. Um, You're good right, reaction yeah. from. No, no, to make sure we're getting more shrines cleared up. So it's not just the basement attack, it's deep on the left. But some folks are still standing. The scams are surrounding right now as well. And this, the cavalry are finally here for Japan, but it might be too little too late. There's only a handful of them here. And the scams are making a really good protective semicircle around the folks. It's going to be very difficult to get through to the back, but no one's being cleared up. So it's just Nux left holding the front line pretty much. No one's only got a handful of units left. And it's going to be pretty tough to call. I, I want well, to look at, in. Look at the back. Oh, okay. Here's the boys, here's the boys. <laughs> Javelins have arrived. Two more flaming arrows though. Yeah, all around the back. They held that, they held and that. Just get pushed back. Wow. They held that, that Wow, was okay, break this one down for me, Josh. What? What's just lost, what's just happened? What situation are both of these teams in right now? All right, so Izad's done this absolute good trick. He saw that they were under his town center. He canceled the shipment of flaming arrows. He canceled it and sent it in a second cycle late so that he could pick up the remaining Falks at the end of the fight when the Javelins were, were mainly dead. So that was like some, some top level thinking from him there. Um, and it looks like the Saltadors um, actually beating the Skirms in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but I feel like that's because obviously Defender's advantage, he had TC fire, he had Bills, you know, tanking some damage there. I feel like Nooks and Nono could have won that fight, um, but it was just hard, you know, Defender's advantage. Oh, there's more Falks. He's got, he's got three more out, and he's also got a cool green to do with those um, flaming Yeah, the advancement well. from the south of those is stopped immediately. Then they're like, oh, we're about to cross the trade line, but no, the Fox are here. And can I, can I just shots. say, though, the, the scores are so damn close. I thought this was going to be an Izad Perez probably winning this just based on, you know, skill at each sieve. But, my yeah. God, it, it is so rare that games at 15 minutes, still, 2v2 games at 15 minutes have a score this neck and neck. It's literally within 100 of each other. Within 100. That's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> that never happens. Shouldn't really ask for a closer game. And no. The fights even have been very close too. Like, uh, and even I've, just this the ABM, been very just, exciting. he's raiding every. No, no, he's just raiding everywhere. Yeah. Like, and he's, he's still managing so, the jab, so, man. It's like, everywhere. holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. But this has been... I almost you, like you would think that they've done this exact battle about 30 times and they've gone okay what did we fail at last time we didn't raid enough I'll do the raiding you hold the trade line in the center and mm. another trading post and he's follow. done that he's done that because um Iza and Perez don't have anything they can go in terms of heavy cavalry um early on so that was like so that was really smart thinking from them there um it's gonna go Yabasumi though. Um, he's had bashing out some Yabasumi, which are like really strong anti artillery, um, but they're gonna get picked off easily by these skirmishes. So I feel like I don't think that's the right call. I think he's made a mistake there. I think going goon. So if you see, like, that he's bashing. Hey, can you see Perez's goons? The dragoons? Yeah. Yeah, so he's batching out this anti this anti cavalry, right? But it, it's barely counter hand cavalry. But Nooks and Nono aren't making any hand cavalry. So they're making units to counter nothing. I. I I don't, under, I don't know why they're doing that. I mean, maybe they're just looking to get in some raids of their own and have some mobility on the field, potentially. Mobility, yeah. I, oh, it oh could, just one thing that, that they were struggling with, but the the reverse choke is happening. The shrine's being re-added in on the left-hand side mm. now. And, and he's got the town center on the, the right Japanese as well. Expand them once more. Yeah. Although the Fox are out of position here. Oh, no, he doesn't take one off. If the Yabu Sami can get some volleys off here, it could be good. But Izad and Perez are going to start pushing in now. The reverse fight. The flaming arrows advantage. coming through to back this up as well, so. One foul got picked up on the right hand down. side already. Yeah, second foul, third foul, oh, that's a big fall. Day. And they've got them in the choke point, but yeah, right now, exactly. what are the javelin riders doing? They're just sitting here doing nothing. They're just chilling on the back like, line. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's we'll, kind we'll of not the point here. of the unit, I would think. <laughs> but yeah, the choke point was actually a really good spot. Look, they forced them right. They they, did, they barely even took any volleys. They just it was a bit of an artillery skirmish, and then they just like you know not that like this position. Um, uh, I do realise why he actually made some goons. He's anti raid basically. Um, he's batched out yeah. some lafitis, which are like really strong heavy cav. So we're gonna pick off the raids and stop this from happening. 
Although he does, he can't overcommit on the goons because he don't like. The, there's there's no point making you know fifteen goons to handle five raiders. Yeah, that's why we were talking about um, no one knows APM like I said being all over the map. Yeah. He's moved those uh, those raiders out of uh, out of fog of war up to the north. He's got raiders coming into the south because he sees the uh, the the goons defending the, the north side of the map as well. Like he's really doing a good job of, of pushing, pulling like a pulley system, making a, a forced reaction from Perez here, which gives them more time to kind of figure out what their answer is going to be and what they're going to try next. No, definitely, definitely. Um, and I feel like I missed this totally, but Dutch has a really good timing to go age four um, around about this, at this time of the game, around about 15 minutes. And Nooks, I mean, Izad and Perez definitely realize that, and that's why they're pushing in. Because if you look at this now, Nooks is ahead. He's at age four already, and he's going to be getting factories out, which are basically 10 villages. Um, so oh, wow. he's going to be ahead by quite a bit here. Um, and it looks... And it's, it's to a point where you can just push out constantly, right? Yeah, exactly. They've just, he's got... He's infantry train time in deck. We had that. We saw that before. Don already was asking why he's got infantry train time. Um, and it looks like this is why. He's, he's going to be able to just bash out more skirms and saltadors. And it, it looks like it's going to be a brawl who can reinforce the fastest. Yeah, because H4 has just arrived, so... Um... Gonna be uh, one big battle to decide this, do you think? I think this is gonna be one big battle think it might and, be a right now? and a reinforce. Um, although, a thing to note Japan should be going Yumi. I don't think Ashi are the play. I think he's just. He ma they're gonna force a fight here, but the Ashi, not the right call. Did <sighs> Yumi are just so strong with Way of the Bow, and they're not. He's, he hasn't gone. He has, he's gone, Ashi. I think. <sighs> what, do, what do you reckon, guys? I. I Basically, Ashi are like really strong musketeers, right? They're low mobility, but they've got some high damage and they can protect the Saltadors. But the problem is, is they don't counter anything in this fight. They, they counter the Javelin Riders and the Lafitis, kind of. But the Skirmash is just so big, he, he should have gone Yumi, I reckon. Yumi and more goons from Perez. Oh, those foaming arrows are firing off and a couple of scams will fall, but the Falks are nice and safe at the bar. Exactly. If the cool, the cool rings should be shooting at these flames, though. And the flaming arrows aren't actually upgraded yet. Oh no, there they go, they just got off their upgrades. Although the artillery is packing up, they're gonna probably get hot body blocked here. There's an up. Oh, doesn't quite get the, the heavy cannon. Neither side really wanna overcommit to yeah, this fight. Yeah. They know this like... is the, the knife's edge of the game. Yeah. Luke and Nona, I reckon, had that fight. If they absolutely bum rushed it, sniped the flaming arrows with the, with the culverines. Oh, he's waiting for the two culverines. Oh, the two culverines from Nona. Oh, yeah. Although, there goes the heavy gun. Oh, There's some low HP flaming arrows though. This might be the time to get in and try to get the kill. They're gone. Um, Flank around the right hand side with a couple of these raids would be a really smart move if we can get there. Because right now all they're doing is body blocking. Um, Elite Javelin Riders trying to throw some damage through as well. And so far, Nux and Nona are pushing this fight back a little. And the skirmishes though, a lot of them are firing. They're not in exactly. range. We need to be able to push this army forward. The Javelin Riders are just getting absolutely destroyed here. They're just getting dropped, so nothing protects the skirmishes here. I, I feel like... The, oh was, no, the, the Falks are about to be oh, raided yeah. to death. The, the goons are in. One Falk snipe. The Culverines will pick off oh, the Flaming yeah. Arrows though. Um, which is basically... Yeah, really but they thing. die for their sins. Exactly, yeah. So it's just the skirmish and match left, really. And how well are they able to hold the line? Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes, as they say. Although, there's two reinforcing heavy cannons coming in from Dutch here. Uh, is he teched his factories onto heavy cannon production? No, he hasn't fired. Ooh. This, this scare mash just, it doesn't seem to get smaller. No. Nah. <laughs> like... He's just, he's just got constant batches out, and he's he's still macroing for, to get onto um, mills and plantations here. Um, so, this isn't even the worst that we're seeing yet. Like, the skirms are going to be coming out so much more quicker. Um, Okay, so the knights from no well. no have actually gone down to the south yeah. as well. Stop those raids. EZ did a really good raid there. I think he picked up four or five villages. Um, so he has to go back and defend that. Uh, I, I don't know here. I feel like that fight was interesting. He, he They basically, you know, charged in and... No no should have been on the back line. He shouldn't have been firing. Let Nooks, you know, deal the damage. He's the damage dealer. He's got the artillery. He's got the skirmishes. He's just there to, you know, stay at the back line. Pick off any, you know, um, counter flanks. Um, yeah, uh, imagine if those uh, those javelin throwers just stayed to the left hand side of the uh, he'd still have Falks. them. All. He'd still have they, them. They all. wouldn't have got raided yet. Yeah. yeah. 
more cool reads getting backed out from Nono. They're really trying to handle this, this flaming arrow mass, and I feel like that's absolutely Oh, but fair. Perez is pushing in the middle. He's, he's gassing it. He he's gonna, wants to pick one out. Cannon's firing from the uh, from the, uh, the the Ganon there as well. We're gonna watch taking too much damage from these structures. Look on the bottom. Look on the bottom. The raids from the Lafiti. Oh yeah, come and in, if he sees that if he sees that gold mine line of sight, he sees the gold mines there. He if he's if he if he sees the, the amount of res in that gold mine. Oh no, he doesn't. He's going top. He's going top. Because like Sammy Bills are on that coin mine at the bottom. There's like bloody hell. There's what 15, 16? That could be a GG moment right there, but he's gonna opt for the middle. Damn. Almost had it, almost had it. There's 70 skirmishes in this mass, bro. Oh, the Falks are firing the flaming arrows. There's just an arty fight in the middle of the map. But he's not gonna he's not gonna actually win that. The flaming arrows are gonna destroy him there. He can't push it solo though. He he's really push. worried about losing he... the mass, understandably. Yeah. No, no, is the only one that's not up now. Oh dear, yeah, they've kind of missed their opportunity here. Japan Age Four, um, getting his shrine tech up, which increases shrine gather rate by I think two hundred percent or a decent a decent amount. Um, well, two hundred to five hundred percent, some ridiculous amount. And um, look at um, Izad and Prez's score, absolutely going wild here. I feel like they had their opportunity to win that fight that we were saying about before. And they've they've missed it. I think it's now heavily in Is Adam Prez's favor. Yeah, and the, the boom hasn't been bad from either team here. I, I think the army composition wasn't necessarily wrong from Nux and Nono, -No, but they weren't able to get like a clean engagement or or a good strong flank out of these riders to, to deal with those flaming arrows and fight breaking out once again in the middle. Mm. I think this might be all she wrote though. You see the scams just melting now yeah. very quickly to the vigilantes and uh, Goons waiting to maybe go in and snipe the what's left of these Falks. He is transitioning. Well, which now a heavy now, but... Yeah, he needs more houses. No, the scams are still holding. These are such a stubborn mass of scams from uh, he from could have, Look here. how much res he's floating. He's floating 2k of each, basically. Um, he's losing a lot of scams now, but... He needs, he needs houses. Because look, he's only at 120 pop. Out of 200, and yeah, he could no. quite easily have at least 150. At this stage in the game, you really want to be pushing to that pop gap, and I mean, as you can see, that the army numbers are making up the difference here. If, if you yeah. just get more and more of these scams out, oh, that was a big shot. That from was the a massive there. volley from the from there. The heavy cannons. The, yeah, so the, the meaty chunk Although right here, through the middle. There's just so many flaming arrows. It's just it doesn't matter at this point. Japan's just got so many. Oh, the many knights are trying to come in and finally get some damage on on the arty though, but but they're just getting melted. Bit of body them. blocking. They're not able to move. Yeah. Oh, they they fire back. Though. A couple of scares came in to get some damage. Some good no. cool so micro will be able arrows. to pick some off though, and he does. He picks up a few flaming arrows, dealing some surrounding damage to a few. The goons are here now. They're trying to snipe the uh, heavy cannon as Ouch. well. They will be able to do so. I think scam numbers are getting really thin. Down to 35. Another big shot coming out, but all that's left is a handful of uh, skirmishes yeah, at this no, point. Yeah, no, calling the GG there. The GG's Congratulations yeah. to Izad and Perez taking the second game. Man. Good stuff, boys. What a game. That was intense. That was a great game. I reckon I, they, they man, had that. You see, I haven't that. got a clue what's going on. That was, that was awesome. That was bloody... Even a fort. Look, a fort coming down. A bloody fort coming down from Perez. Man. I, I honestly reckon they had the timing. They had them. <laughs> that that <laughs> one good. fight just there under that middle trade and post spot. If, if they yeah. just uh, they could have they it. had the RT mass. The problem is as soon as China gets, I mean sorry, not China, Japan hits like a, a limit of like eight flaming arrows. They're just so good because they're like anti artillery and infantry um, rolled into one. Yeah. So they just yeah. destroy this army. I, I feel like. Do you remember when they went like Ashy Skirm and there wasn't much goons? That was their opportunity to push in, and I feel like they missed it, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Although No No's APM was ridiculous. I got it. I got to be honest. <laughs> it was doing so. Yeah, much. man, it was honestly great raids from both sides as well. Um, um, Azad also getting his own raids in, at least attempting to, mm -hmm. but No No definitely had the upper hand in terms of raiding. Definitely. Man, definitely. what a game that was.
That was an epic game. See, um, now it's got to go to a best of five. We have to see. I want to see three more of those. Well, they still haven't done their best two, their best two matchups yet. So we're still okay. waiting on Nooks and Nono's um, best two sim composition. So he's going to have to pull it out now. I, I hope he pulls it out now. <laughs> Otherwise, the stream is ending <laughs> quite early. What <laughs> um, yeah. else would you if not now, right? Exactly. Um, all right. I'm just looking at the post game here, and it looks like... Um, the, the end of the fights are quite even, to be fair. Um, like, at 21 minutes and at 13.50, like, they both take fights, right? But they both come out equal, like, dead equal. It was only the last fight that they really messed up. Um, and even, like, if we look at the Vilpop... Oh, yeah, the Vilpop was ridiculous. Who was down? Yeah, Nooks was just... Oh, no, Brits, though. Mm. Res count, maybe? Res was still pretty equal. I feel like... Eco-wise, both sims were fine. They just, Nooks and Nono just didn't come across in the military micro as opposed to Izad and Perez. I feel like that's the result of this game. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was, it was such a good game. And we got to see some lovely volleys as well coming out of the artillery from Nooks T. I was yeah, actually, uh, I was really, really satisfying to watch. No, that was great. Alright, we're just going to get into the next game in one second, folks. Alright. Alright, so that one going over to Izan and Perez again, and looks and I'm taking the defeat. And, um,. Okay, so it looks like Nooks is going to be going Sweden, France. Okay, top civs here. They're playing there. They're bringing out their main civs. So we're going to see this Sweden, good civs, right? yeah. France. Oh, Mr. Sweden, France versus India, Aztec. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm optimistic for this one, and I know I, I've been kind of backing Nux and No No um, so far throughout because the underdog side of things. But if we look at last game, as as an outsider looking in, if you told me that one of those teams is mid table and the other team is top of the table, I wouldn't believe you. Oh yeah, definitely. That that did not look that like that game mismatch. was so close. Like holy crap. And, and that was when they weren't playing their best civs? Yeah. They were playing civs that you've never really seen them play? Okay then, well I'm excited for what they're going to do in game three. Oh, definitely. With their yeah, best yeah. civs. Oh, yeah, no, totally, I agree. Um, I'm just waiting on the go-ahead for the next game and we should be right to get into the spectator mode. So, just get ready for that. Oh, I'm ready. You better believe I'm ready. I've even pressed the spectator mode button this time without being told to. That's how ready I am. <laughs> You're bloody hyped for this, Jesus. Still waiting on it. Dude, ah. Oh. Alright, so if we just. God damn it. Okay, I'll get GK. You're right for the predictions. You're right to do the next one. Yeah, oh, GK, yeah, don't put Bolton in this one, bro. Come on, yeah, bro. Don't drop the ball. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, all right. So they have launched. We'll just have to wait. There it is. All good. Should be on the dunes. Uh, I'll get the observer going. Yeah, I got it. Dunes observe. Bum bum bum. Oh, do you have the background music? I'll tell you on? one thing. <laughs> yeah, um, the uh, the games definitely uh, you definitely find games to spectate a lot quicker than you do on AOE two. Sometimes you have to wait quite a while. I right, paused at zero second. Okay, I'm at eight seconds. Sorry. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Okay, keep that's going. fine. I'll, I'll go up to you. I'll, I'll go up to you. I'll tell you what, why don't I count you in? Are you ready? Okay, go. Three. Two, one, let's go. Perfect. Didn't even have to pause on your end. <laughs> no, that was great. Perfect. Perfect. Um, okay, a bit more of a, um, a, a gap between the towns I noticed on this map compared to the last one. More similar to the first map we've seen. You'll have to forgive my lack of map knowledge on this <laughs> one, guys. 
This is actually, yeah. this is a massive split of the towns. Like, this is abnormally large. Like, they're literally equ equidistant from each player when teams should spawn together. Um, and so, it, what, what this actually looks like is the most common area to map Arabia, where it's very hilly, it's very open. Um, yeah, and, definitely. Um, There's, if we had, we hosted this, like, tournament, um, this land tournament uh, called the New World Championships a few years ago, which was like the last. This was before DE came out, and um, yeah, this was like the main map that everything that everything was played on basically. Um, this was like the yeah. map where you got to see like um, the top players, you know, pull out the craziest strategies and absolutely just like it was just basically micro down to who could literally micro their insane fights the better. Um, so definitely, in my opinion, at least for me, this is such a nostalgic map. Um, if anyone in chat remembers the classic Cossack micro clip um, with um, Lord Raphael, uh, yeah, I hope you guys remember that from this map. Uh, so, good memories, good memories. So, so what we should see then, uh, again, um, on, on maps as open as this, is even more open than the last map, which gave us some really great content to watch from both of these teams, is we should see more mobility again kind of being king at least in the early game Definitely. before those big armies are able to come together um so if we're talking about mobility being key and what kind of cavalry we're gonna look from which side would you say is gonna have the advantage this time around normally i'd say izad and perez but i know what strategy nooks and nona we're gonna do and they're going to have they're, they're gonna be able to just pull izad and perez all over the shop they're gonna just be so so control of them of the pace of this game um, okay. If they do the strategy they think they're going to do, um, and they are, yeah, they've got the card, they've got the deck for it. Um, if anyone knows Nooks and Nonos, patented, epic, Haas, Fusilia combo, there's like this, there's this um, mercenary unit called Fusilia um, that Sweden yep. can send um, for 300 coin and makes it trainable from the saloon, and, oh, and barracks, and it's like basically really speedy infantry. Um, so okay. it's this heavy hitting infantry that can just run around the map and count as all cav. Um, so we're going to be seeing a lot of kiting, hitting and running, just absolutely, you know, doing a number on Izad and Perez. Although, see this like defensive Agra, they're, you know, they're basically going to, you know, try and stop that, um, running around the map sort of play. Um, obviously. Heavy hitting infantry that run round and can break horses. Where I'm from, we call them Scottish. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, these are these. But, they're uh, actually French, which is surprising as a matter of fact. Heavy infantry. Well, see, no, it isn't, right? Man, as as a Britishman, as an Englishman, who 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 gets all this, haha, two world wars, la la la, we beat you, um, we saved you. But man, the French actually have a really, really good war record. Like they do, just not the big important ones, but like small walls. Man, the French, the French have a great war record. They've well, so many Well, Napoleonic victories. era, also battles as well. Yeah. And I mean, this, this is when it's era named after a, after a French guy. That that says a lot, right? Exactly. And um, we do see the early agri coming down here from um, India. I uh, don't know if he uh, actually sent any food, but Perez has opted for the fast age up. He's he's up in four minutes flat, um, which is ridiculously Whoa. quick, and he's going for a warrior freeze boom by the looks of it. Um, so I have been following Perez too closely. Azad did get a couple of treasures with like 145, 150 food He's, in. Yeah. Um, so maybe that got slung over. That's I an option in AoE 3. He did. He Oh, yeah. He actually went up with the Elder. So he got this uh, Warheart Traveler in. So basically, I think they realized this, this mobility from Nooks and Nono, and if they're putting up so many defensive buildings. Um, just to get line of sight and just to claim hunts early on. I feel like that's what's going to happen. Um, yeah, Sc scouting's key. You need to know what's coming so you can counter it and prep for it. So Yeah, they're going to yeah, just have yeah, so much line of sight. Yeah, the the Fuss are going to come in. They're going to do the strat. The only concern I have is... Am I missing? Where's Nooks' stable? Do you see a stable from Nooks? Oh, there. It's only just coming down now. That's why. Um, um, okay, can we can can you clear up what is probably an AoE three bug for me? There's a house in the very middle of the map being built by um Azad right now, but there's a villager just walking into it constantly rather than building the house. <laughs> what? Like, okay, it, it's been is it gone? Now. Yeah, I was like, it just deleted. What the? I was like, what is yeah, going on? I saw that too, and I was like, yeah. uh, 
I didn't get time to see what. Parting, bro. Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> happens in AOE two all the time. Villagers just walk up to something and just stand there. It's like, okay, bro. Thanks, Luke. Really doing good to the, up. doing good to the to the civilization. Um, for so gonna come out now. Uh, is just gonna be able to pick up a few bills if he's uh, quick on it. But does see it? He pull does pull his bill back. Um, so Perez definitely great with the line of sight there. Um, I I'm so excited for this timing push because I'm. I, I, I love watching them when they do this game quite a bit. This like sort of strategy. Um, I don't know. What, I don't know if this is the right play now. Um, does have the eight husk coming out, but it's a bit slow. Um, but he's going to get on the warriors here. This is the this is the moment. This is the match here. If he see this, see this eight husks, If they can get on top of the warriors, yeah. get on top of. Oh, there's a lot of anti cap there though. Sea poison and Puma spearmen. Um, Be careful, find up the hill as well. Yeah. Um, Fusiliers actually do have a lot of siege, so they'll be able to get that war hut down if they can uh, actually fight it for a bit. Not to, not to pull back out of this. Um, the, the issue, and th this has be been a consistent be thing. Yeah, this is a consistent thing I've actually seen from Nono and Nux, and obviously they had vastly more experience than I'm in this game in the 90 minutes that I've been um, involved in it. But showing your army this early and, and not getting damaged from it is really risky because yeah. now, as Adam Perez, know what to expect. So you need to kind of commit and get the damage done before oh, a counter no. can come into play. Oh no, four coming out from the front. Oh, and he doesn't shoot them. He could have got a tall wagon. Um, but they're going to com are they committing to this fight. I don't know. It looks like they're going to try and commit, but there's too much anti cab there. I feel like he can't. They really, they really want it. Um, well, the wind okay, they have hill advantage, I guess. There's good micro coming out of. Um, Oh, Zati, they'll make sure he picked off the. Uh, They've come out really The fuse laser always tried to. The, the, the Fuss micro, micro is absolutely insane. Uh, evoked, I hope you're watching and you're taking note of this. Watch his, watch his Fuss Micro. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, honestly, they I. They cleaned it up. They did, from, what, from my experience, they did a really good job at that fight. They came out so positive, considering what I w would have thought yeah. would be the result of that. Um, and now they've got. Yeah. They can push back in here because. Perez has gone for more of a boom strat, so he doesn't really have anything defending his base at the moment. If they gas it in, you yeah. know, he's in trouble. He actually had a lot of villagers oh, here gathering that. from these, uh, these ostrich and then he had to pull back. Yeah, look at the siege oh, on these missileers. They're going to get that war hut down. They are, but we just lost a lot of Hussar at the front though. Nux uh, took some big losses he took a beat as in. the slingers turned up. The Aztecs and... and oh, the slinging. noise out of that building! Oh, it was great. He's tracking another war hut down as well. Uh, yeah, I, so some of the sound effects when these buildings collapse. Oh yeah, it's off. absolutely fire. Yeah. Great. Um, on I think, base like, uh, I I'm always saying because like I did a strip the strat a lot, and I think he needs to go for raids a bit more. Like he could have picked up a few bills here, and I feel like they can't yeah. push into this. Um, too well. I feel like he needs to. Just, he could have picked up a few more bills here, but it's us. And he sacrificed his Yeah, economy. again, you've got the mobile, you've got the mobility, right? Let's put it to you. Same as when uh, go back to game one, um, as I've played the Britain, he had Hussar as well, and um, rather than trying to take these engagements, he was just running around the back, playing bills, delaying any eco build up. Oh and, god! I mean, look at this. Do you see the bottom coin mine? Yeah. He's the the torps. He tried to like torp that oh coin mine. Oh my god! Line. That's like so greedy. Holy crap! He's forced. He's forced uh, three hussars from Isad to defend that, but. My god, that was greedy as hell from No No. Torping your opponent's coin mine. Your opponent's secondary mine as well, I think it was. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's pretty close to, to the home. Why would, he's got so oh, many there's left. there's a up in the middle, too. He, has he scouted the ones on the edge? He's scouted the ones on the edge, wow. he's just not torping them. Yeah, um... Did go try I don't know, this isn't looking great for No No and No. It's not, it's not. Um, it's really not, I know. They've done well, but they just needed just to they they marketed the fight really well, but I feel like they just needed to just 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 send three hosts for a quick raid, just idle your opponents. Like game one, just get yeah. your opponents as idle as possible. Yeah, exactly. And I just don't think that they've done enough damage on the Aztecs have actually been able to add in quite a big amount of slingers, good military numbers now. Yeah. Even with oh, that what a pop of really Jack Although he's getting some raids on the back line behind Perez's base here. Um, but hope yeah, the push are in now. Um, there's raid at the front as well, but too little, too late, maybe. Exactly, yeah. 
I mean, Azed and Perez are still on over 30 villagers each. Nux and Nono both below that. And they're supposed to be the ones doing the raiding, so not really ideal. Military numbers definitely favoring Azed and Perez as well. And I, I think this could be a, a quicker game than the last. Sling is, of course, not the best option into the Sasar, though, and are actually being mowed down pretty quickly. This is a really good engagement in the north from uh, from Nux. And now off to the back out, not the elephants are here. This was really good. He got quite a few military kills here, can pull back. Oh, and that's then, a and then what you should do is uh, re engage from, um, somewhere else. Perez attempting to like build a proxy wall there to try and block block the Hus. Doesn't quite get it down though. Oh yeah. We're four to three. <laughs> I'm getting up uh I see he sends two fuss back to try and defend that there. But like Izad and Perez's eco is just going gangbusters at the moment. Um and it's not just like Yeah. Like, I feel like they needed to idle um, ease out a bit more. And we now have Zambarak coming out, so to deal with those raids. Um, I feel like Nooks and Nona need to age up. And it looks like... Let's see. Yeah, neither of them are macroing for the age up by the looks of it. And there were some good raids for Ezad in that one, but yeah. The big supply army from the Indians in the middle now. They can defend those houses yeah. quite easily. I think, I think we're going to see oh, a 3-0. Wow. Outpost falling down pretty quickly, and the threat of push are engaging there, but there's just not enough of them. So Nux is like, well, look, I can engage on you. And they're like, no, no, you can't. We know you can't. Sorry, Nux. Yeah, he's like, trying to fade him in. Although there's going to be, we're going to see some leather cannons popping here from Nona, and I feel like that's that's definitely the right option. Those um, slingers are pretty damn close. Does only get one out. So only will get a single volley off. And he's dodged really well. Oh, more raids just, just towards the center, actually. So many villagers trying to come to the center for Rosetta, and all of them are getting picked off by some Hussars. He sent the military over here now as a reaction, but he's already lost so many villagers here. It was really good, really good find from the Scores Hussar. Amongst all of this engagement that's happening in the middle as well. Yeah, the, the Fusser... Well, cannons are in, as you, as you said. The Fusser oh, just getting put some good hits. I feel like yeah. the, the reaction was fine, but it just wasn't enough. The, the Hus probably wasn't the call. I think uh, Nook should have aged up oh, and no. switched to skirmishes. I feel like that. The Spear is coming in. Yeah, the Spear is coming in. These, these Hus are, I mean, what's left of them. Short work being made of. He's going to opt for another stable, though. I feel like Skirmish. does actually get those walks on, up on the bottom line. <laughs> he has talked that stuff. Yeah, actually got all three of them up, that's crazy. I feel like leather cannons, he needs... Leather cannons is what's gonna save him here. He needs to patch out. He's gonna miss the pop. Oh no, he gets it. Look at those, look at the volleys from the leather cannons. It's saving him right now. Yeah, the rush is picking up a couple of units with his volleys. So. He needs to age up. Like, the, the scores are fairly even, but Nook should be 3k ahead right now. I'm 3k up from what he is. 4k up from what he is even. Um, I feel like, how's that? They could, I feel like they, sh they need to push out, just poke a bit, and he needs to click up. Because Aztec is aging up, um, his ads are already up, he went up with the Tower of Victory. And um, looks like Nooks is waiting for one more card. To no, he doesn't even have the card, he needs to... That looks like age 2 macro still. Um, I think they're going to try and win the fight here in age 2. A lot of bills coming out in the center though. It's going to pick up quite a few of these. I think 5, 6. Going to go down. Um, as soon as he sees the age up. Yeah, he sees the age up from Perez. I think they've decided they're down on score. They're down on age. And now they've got to go in. Yeah, they, sh they should at this point have more military. Just based on the age up. Um, coming through. So, um, hopefully it's going to be enough. And building raids are coming through as well. But... I feel like they don't, they just don't have the, um, they're just a bit too slow. They, like, he's going to be able to get his age 3 shipments in. Perez and these are going to be able to get, um, all these age 3 shipments. Yeah, he's yeah, sending the are falling, but, it, yeah, again, it could be too, too little, too late. Yeah, look, um, the, those, those torps on the top are being raided now as well. Oh, yeah. By Perez. They're going down so quick. Torps on the south are being destroyed as well. Now down 7k score. 
Damn, that's such a shame. This is the I thought this was their best combo, and I feel like they did well with it, but I don't know. I feel like they were just a bit slow, just a bit slow. Like the win condition for this strat is you have to take out your opponent's first bat straight away and stop the snowball. Yeah. That's how they win this, and I feel like they didn't quite get on that. Yeah, I, I think it's probably also important to note that um, Zed and Perez, uh, if, if you're going to prep for any strat against Nuno and Nux, it sounds like this is the one that you're expecting and this is the one that you prep for, so they probably had a good idea of what was to come. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do this strat every single tournament, every single matchup, so... <laughs> with, the, with one game worth of research, they would know it's wrong. Even down oh, to the unit. Siege time. elephants firing off of the building, though, and stables will be next in the line of sight to fall. Yeah, he's gonna have to get some. I understand Nux and No 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 want to call the GG on this one too early. It's the last game of the tournament potentially for them. They wanna dig their heels in a little bit and stick That's their such elbows a shame. out. <laughs> oh my favorite team. Down and out. We had a uh, GK, we had a fantastic a game team. <laughs> They, they had one, it was me casting. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, they'll, 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 you'll, set, you'll see a message from them later. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the leather no. cannons are getting actually a pretty good volley, but one does go down to the siege elephants. And, yeah, look at the map control. It's just so in favour of um, these Adam Perez here. Like, look, yeah, look at the mini-map. They've absolutely got it. Yeah, the south covered. They have full control of the middle. They've had full control of the middle pretty much all game, actually. It's only been the sides where um, there's been some harassment, yeah, but... So oh, no! No one's not paying attention, and some of these leather cannons have been picked off by the siege alleys. Can't afford those losses, especially at this point in the game. Mm. Just no, no left to go to age 3 now as well. Yeah, there comes the GG. Well, Izan Perez taking it 3-0. Um, the elimination coming out on the top spot. They're going to secure their lead into the semi-finals. Congratulations, boys. Uh, that was a that was a major series. That was insane. Um, I'm absolutely amazed. I thought uh, Nooks and Nona would at least take this game, but um, John over the Izan Perez. Congratulations to to Nooks and Nona. As again, as as an outsider coming in, they definitely gave me a show. Um, game two was oh I, I I could watch that game again quite quite happily. Oh heck yeah! Um, I could watch the second and game. Then I, I respect the old attempt as far. Yeah, I, I respect the old attempt of game one as well, but mm. just unfortunately didn't didn't quite have it in them to take it this time. But if they've been around since two thousand and five, I don't think they're going to go anywhere too soon, and we'll likely see them back. Yeah, I, I'm. I want to see them again in another two v two tournament because I love their play style. Um, obviously, you know, most people haven't haven't seen it, but in the uh, the group stages, um, they were just demolishing demolishing teams that were like way higher than them, teams that were way higher on the ladder. Um, they were just they were crushing them just with their sheer. Um, I don't know how to like just tactical genius. Like they would just like come yeah. around for flanks. They would pick off Vils out of nowhere. They were, they were just really good at luring their opponents in, baiting them in, and then just swamping them in a massive fight. And it's just, it's a shame that I don't get to see that anymore for like another six months. Because um, <laughs> I'm even probably going to rewatch those games because they were really fun earlier in the tournament to cast. And I, I still love them for it. They're, they're a great team. Um, just a shame not doing it in this, obviously, in this match. Because Ezan Pro is just such a strong team. Um, but congratulations, boys. Uh, keep it up. Uh, great team. Um, it's a shame being knocked out now, but uh, absolutely lovely play style, so don't stop. Alright, well, uh, I think that's all we had on the docket for today, but... I think it is. Yeah. Uh, I'll just get the approval from GK uh, to call it quits here, but uh, thanks for coming out, everyone. That was, uh, that was an insane game. I love it, I love it. Yeah, that was intense, man, intense. Alright, so it looks like we're actually going to go down for a player interview uh, to the two teams. Uh, so I'm going to go head over to Nooks and Nono uh, for a quick post-game interview after we check out the uh, post-game here. Yeah, if you guys just have two more minutes, Nooks and Nono are down to, you know, kind of do a quick player interview. Uh, I guess a farewell good. interview. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sad. I wanted to see them, like, <laughs> in the finals. Definitely well fought series and great casting, both of you. And, you know, very impressed with you, Fluffy Bunny. 
for not knowing AoE 3, that was awesome. Definitely, definitely. Man, jo Josh did a great job over here at, at, at just Facilitator, running the yeah. ship. Yeah. yeah. Alright, well, I'll look forward to the player interview. They'll hang out for a few minutes, so join them soon. Cheers. Sounds good. Yep. If I actually quickly look at the uh, team stats, they were actually ahead on res. They had more res in the bank. Um, they just yep. lost the micro fights, which is so such a shame. <laughs> um, Alright, let's, uh, let's go... Uh, Hop in that call for a sec. I'll just switch yeah, this up. Hey guys, uh, unfortunate loss there, but uh, that game two was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh, I need to cut the sound of the uh, Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a bit frustrating because, um, as I wrote on the chat, uh, we uh, so I'm Nux and yeah, no, no, you want to say yeah, hi? Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, we our English not perfect, but so we were a bit frustrated uh, because um, we reserved the sieves we know better on other maps like Mexico, exactly, and uh, and, and Pepper yeah. Coast. Was, so uh, we kind of yeah. We kind of had to to practice like new sieves for the first maps. Uh, the the first like on Deacon, I never played Otto, and he doesn't play India either. So, so yeah, the thing is, we didn't play for so long, and uh, we don't know the sieves so much. So that's that's what uh, was frustrating a bit. I know. I was like so. I was so sad. Cause, like I didn't get to see your Portugal or Russia, and I was like, I so wanted to see that because I know. Um, you guys love taking a beating early with Russia and then letting ports boom, but um, ah, I, was, I, was, I was so sad because I knew these weren't your best sieves. I was like, ah, oh, I yeah. wanted to see them at the peak. We had to win games to show them, so it's fair. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, if, if we can go back to game two, which definitely was the highlight of the, of the series for me. Mm -hmm. um, would you... Joshua had, had this thought that it was about 10 minutes maybe before the game closed out, maybe about 7 minutes before the game closed out, where both armies met around that middle trading post, and you had about 6 or 7 fouls before the fire arrow was able to mass up, and Josh was desperately hoping that you guys would take the fight. He thought that was your winning moment. Was there any particular reason why you guys opted not to take that? Did you think that you'd win further down the line in the game, or were you just not comfortable with the numbers and how they look? I think, yeah, he had some flaming arrows and I had only like one or two kills and um, so I thought like regular cannons big against flaming arrows are are worse mm, so yeah, we the... felt like we didn't, we didn't have a, a, enough uh, kills so and I knew uh, no no would have kills he told me so that's why we went back I think it was that Wait, moment the, yeah. is it right uh, no no um, my uh thought on this game is, uh, as you can see in the post game, I had like 80 kills. I think yeah. my units were not good in fights, but uh, I could read more. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, just... Done... Uh... Oh, sorry to interrupt, man. You've done such a good job at raiding that game. Honestly, every time that we looked on one part of the map, you were somewhere else. Your EPM yeah. must have been off the charts that uh, game. I, I could have read more, I think, because my units were useless in fights, because of the composition. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, I, I I got a bit cold uh, when they counter my red uh, really well, so I got a bit cold uh, reading again. But I should have read it more, even if uh, they called they cut some reds, I shouldn't have stopped. Uh. Mm, yeah. Definitely. If and uh, no. because we we took a big fight and just my my units weren't uh, great because uh, there are too many infantry and uh, the Lifidis knights have been very nerfed uh, recently yeah true, with the last match so, so it was I, I feel like that's not totally a, fair there was yeah. close to the, the the final fight there was there was a point where like yeah. you had your um, javelin riders in front of the skirms and I was like, I feel so bad for him because I know he knows that these javelin riders don't do anything in this fight but he's like they're not going to do anything anyway, so we've got to do yeah. something with them. Um, I honestly, from yeah. looking at the, the, the game, I think for the level of knowledge you guys had with those sieves, I think you guys kind of deserved the win in game two. Um, so like from the <laughs> fact, I know they weren't your strongest sieves, and for how well you played them, I, I, I really wanted to just give it to you because you guys just had it so well down pat. Uh, 
that's nice from you. Yeah, yeah. Nice played, from you. Yeah. Last time I played Dutch was on the Vanilla, <laughs> like, oh, like, yeah. really first one. Oh so, my god. Uh, yeah. That's ridiculous. That's <laughs> no, even I... that's even more insane. Well. <laughs> yeah, it did look that way. Yeah. And uh, so about the game one, just uh, Nux misplayed and sent uh, his minute man uh, by error. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I was like, is he doing it to protect the Avis? Or like, what? <laughs> no, I was like, gosh, I sent minute man. And Nono was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and then uh, what's happened is uh, I had two builds for this one. One uh, with the early Fleot ele elephants. I don't know how you call them, but the mm -hmm. siege elephants. Yeah. And one with more sepoy, and uh, I should have seen that they have uh, no TP line and very back uh, racks. So I should have gone for the sepoy build because uh, elephants were Correctly. very useless. I was literally, yeah, I, was I then, what, said that before. I was like, that's exactly right. Um, I'm, yeah. I feel so bad, man. Um, but yeah, you guys are literally spot on with what you're saying. Absolutely spot on with your um, post game analysis. And then last game, um, I think we were in a good spot. We did a good, but just uh, what counters the uh, Fusiliers and the uh, Hussars, in my opinion, is a uh, Pikeman Massé from uh, Aztecs yeah. and uh, yeah. Mass Musk or, or just uh, Strelets and Pikeman. So they had a good composition versus us. Definitely, yeah. We did good, but uh, they did very well catching every raid, catching Vils uh, to expand on gold mines. And, uh, you were greedy. Yeah. You guys were so greedy going for that gold mine next to his market on the bottom. I was like, that's like yeah, a secondary yeah. mine. But what the hell? <laughs> it's actually a good uh, market placement, uh, I would say. Yeah, definitely. He's had, like, and uh, I, I should sure. have bring Fusiliers maybe with them. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, we did. The, yeah. the Agra denies us a lot for this yeah. strat, so we cannot dive into the FB like we would with uh, other sieves. So exactly, I, do, in India is really hard for us. Exactly. Do you guys remember the um, match you played in the last round on Grand Chaco, where you guys like stayed age two and then you did this massive like absolute flank? I can't remember who was it against, but I just, I was waiting for that. I was like, the Husmas just kept yeah. getting poked away and like, you guys couldn't do anything about it. Um, I was, I was so waiting for a massive flank. I was, my heart was like, I'm so sad. <laughs> I didn't get to see yeah, that. They, they overplayed us so much. Like they, they were everywhere. Every yeah. time we wanted to raid somewhere, they were here. Yeah. So it, it's just another level. We knew yeah. we would have a, uh, no chance to win yeah. maybe one or two games, but. No five, yeah. But we are very proud of uh, what we did uh, during the tournament. So yeah. I, yeah, yeah, same. I, in Not my opinion, in my opinion, definitely tactical MVPs. Um, <laughs> especially, especially. And will we see Nux and Nono again going forward? Then I want to. I want to. They've got to come back somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If, yeah, I'm not sure. I was. I yeah. thought I would stop the game. Uh, because uh, we were we were not active before the tournament and. Uh, just we used to play 2v2 and uh, i was so hyped with a 2v2 tournament because there are never some like this yeah and uh, i subscribed nux and uh, me without uh, telling nux uh, <laughs> uh, early and he wasn't even playing the game for like uh, four months or something oh my god and you guys have gotten so, to the quarterfinals yeah. just off that could you imagine yeah. if yeah, you guys were active same. could you imagine no i think we have a good uh, level you're at a good level yeah yeah, we got we got uh, our uh, spike uh, spike level at the end of the tournament. We got better and better, and now we are at, the, oh, at our good. top level, I guess. Definitely. Well, hope to see you guys. I don't know guys. if Nuxis agree. Yeah. yeah. I hope to see you guys. And congrats to uh, to Ezad and Perez and to everyone. Definitely. And great well, cast uh, every match. Uh, it was a pleasure to be casted by you, Joshua. So thanks, thank you. guys. It was a pleasure to watch you. It was a pleasure yeah. to watch. Yeah. Um, we'll hop over to Ezad and Perez now, but definitely GG's guys. Yeah. It was amazing. Thank you. Feel honored to thank cast you. games by you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. And maybe we join for casting. We'll see. Definitely. Actually, yeah, yeah let's definitely do that. Thanks, guys. Okay, okay, great. See you, man. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Congrat. Oh. Congratulations, Hello. Ezad and Perez. Good stuff, boys. Taking the win. Oh. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. We just... How did that one feel? Um, going into it as the favourites, um, expecting maybe a 3-0, knowing that obviously Nux and Nono have been around for a while. 
game one and three, they came at you with some orthodox early aggression. Um, but again, we've, we've been talking to them about, about game two specifically. Did you think game two was was maybe lost at some point? They were looking pretty strong. Yeah, well, he was uh, killing a lot of my shrines on the left side, on the left bottom side. That was pretty annoying to do, so my economy wasn't that great. Like, it used to be when I have 200 pop. But uh, um, also our fights were pretty even, I would say. Yeah. And I also thought, yeah, we it's it's not like we are completely uh, ahead. It's like it's super even. Like, we could also just take one bad fight and then lose the game. Um, but we did okay, I think. Also, at the, the start of the second game, like uh, we killed one TP, and I think Paris was fighting with the with the Dutch in a skirm war. I think that was, was getting tilt. Yeah. I was getting tilt because uh, he was all the time where I was. I mean, I said was yeah. sitting uh, TP <laughs> in the other side of the map, and yeah. I was okay. I go AFK, uh, so he's just gonna go to defend that with the skirms. So right, I wait like 30 seconds and I go to the top side to see the other one, but he was in the top side camping. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, g game one, the early flail rush. Um, w did you expect that kind of super aggro coming out of game one, or did that maybe uh, throw you off a little bit? Well, I think it was super obvious that it would go Sepoy and uh, Abus guns, but I didn't expect the flails. But I don't think that's a good card in 2v2. Maybe 3 versus 3, because it's a lot of elephants walking in there. But in 2v2, I think that's too all in, in my opinion. Yeah, and they you... didn't they didn't even any they didn't accomplish anything with the elephants just to tank a bit but they weren't sieging yeah. anything yeah you guys managed to shut that down pretty quickly and i mean the gg in that game was called 10 minutes and six seconds in like so yeah very all in and then game two completely different style and going into game three then did you know that this was the strat that they were going to pull out this is what they're famous for they do it every tournament they've been doing it a lot in this yeah. tournament Yes, so the Fusiliers in deck and the bar, the Saloon starts, so... Yeah. yeah I, I told Paris that uh, that's like to... That will happen to 99% that will, he will make Fusiliers. And yeah, what well, was a bit har uh, harsh that game, because Paris lost uh, a few builds and his eco was pretty damaged. I guess they backheard it twice, I don't know why, but I, I heard it well, but uh, the Hans have decided to go back. Are we all yeah, one? Yes. <laughs> so I just uh, was fucked uh, with the hands. I couldn't defend my builds well. So I lost two builds, I think, at the start, or one build. And yeah, that's why I just got a bit fucked at the start. Definitely. Didn't have also, enough mass. Yeah, definitely. Also, definitely. You, need a, uh, also you need a high uh, maces mass to deal with Fusiliers. Like, they, they two shot your uh, maces, right? Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, yeah, yeah. I, I reckon, like, with that strat. Um, from what I've found, it's obviously a hus must combo, right? So a good yeah. skirm goon combo um, with like slingers or like longbow um, definitely has a great counter to it. And I think you guys obviously had great sieves um, for that. So you could just yeah. Some. Very good, good sieves for that. And also for the raids, I just decided to go Aztec because if they raid, I just make the warriors and I defend. Mm. And yeah, just to start with some Pumas to stop the Hazard raid, but he wasn't raiding so much with Hazard, so... Mm. Yeah, so he did, a big like, important question then, going into the semi-finals, is the, a particular team that you would rather face? Anyone you, you kind of want to markedly avoid, if you can? Well, I prefer to face a Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it, I love yeah, it. Yeah, unless they change Maito. If they change Maito, I, I'm scared. So, so does that mean yeah, you're scared go... of Mido, or are you actually scared of Kaiser? Is it just the Mido? I, I scared I scared the other player that uh, can join in the team. Oh, okay. <laughs> their their substitute will will come in pro probably, so their combo will be more dangerous for us, I think. And then yeah. with Kinesi and Didi, we just uh, struggle versus them, I think. Mm. So that, that's the match to watch then if you get paired up with them and I'm, I'm sure you'll be watching closely as they face off against um, Tit, Tit and Kine. Um, yeah. It should be interesting. No, definitely. So congratulations, boys. Um, very well played. Uh, moving to the semis now. Good luck with that. Thank you. Good stuff, guys. Thanks. Uh, do, you, do, do you already know when the next uh, quarterfinals uh, is scheduled? I will tell you in just a second. Yes, we do. Uh, it'll be... Monday? Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like Monday, yeah. So in... Uh, Monday. Three, oh, cool. four days. 
Um, so a decent chunk away. That that's probably Sunday for everybody else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so, yeah, all good. So hopefully you guys can come out and check that out. Um, but yeah, thanks for the games, guys. Uh, absolute pleasure, class. Yeah, it was a pleasure to cast definitely. So appreciate that. All good, guys. And you guys can go celebrate your win and prep for the semis. Mm, yeah, we will. We will. Well, we will yeah. see who we will play first, and then make new strats. I guess. Definitely, yeah. definitely. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank you. All righty. So wrapping stuff up here, uh, we'll uh, roll the um, hype video and uh, thanks for coming out, everyone. Honestly, absolute pleasure casting with you, Fluffy Bunny. Absolute great job, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, bit of ball. Such a. Uh, oh, I really good... enjoyed it. Thanks for taking care of me. <laughs> no, it's my pleasure, my pleasure. You actually did really good the first time with AoE 3. Like, really, really good. So, um, congrats, man, congrats. And thanks yeah, for... Yeah, maybe you guys will see me back next time, who knows? Yeah, I'm who sure knows? GK would love that. Um, thanks for coming out, everyone, in chat as well. I hope you guys had a, um, a great time. Uh, thanks for Cast, thanks, John. Uh, EZAD, nah, EZAD's off for tonight. Um, but yeah, hope you guys like the new uh, sound alerts and um, the new emotes you can get. And I uh, hope you guys like the overlay. Uh, once again, pop, props to the uh, for making that. And we'll catch you in the next quarterfinals. See you later, guys.